We're almost done with our best of the rest series, talking about the rest of the cards in Aether Revolt, not spoiled individually. In this video, we're going to tackle the green cards, and in the next video, we'll talk about artifacts. So we're coming down the home stretch. In case you've missed previous episodes, you can click the first link in the description, and that will take you to our Aether Revolt playlist with all the information you'll ever need on the set. Alright, without further ado, let's talk about some green cards. Aether Stream Leopard is 3 mana for a 2-3 cat with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, you get 1 energy. Whenever it attacks, you may pay 1 energy. If you do, it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. This is a solid common. 3 mana for a 2-3 is the standard. Trample is great upside, and it comes with an energy. That's already decent. The ability of making it a 4-3 on attack? I will take that all day. Solid filler creature for any green deck in limited. I love that it provides itself with enough energy to use its ability once. That's great stuff. It's good. High Spire Infusion is 2 mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. You get 2 energy. First things first. High Spire Infusion and High Spire Artisan. Now that's an awesome pair of cards. Really cool artwork synergy here. Big fan. If we're talking playability, this is going to be a solid combat trick in limited. Due to the energy, you get on top of the plus 3 plus 3 burst, but we really need to talk about standard, because again, another pump spell has to be considered for red-green energy. The reason this is included in the discussion is both because plus 3 plus 3 is great, but also because those two energy get you that much closer to another pummeler activation. This is definitely worth testing, and we'll see in the coming weeks where that deck ends up, and which pump spells from Aetheral Volt make the cut, because right now, this and Invigorated Rampage look amazing. Just some thoughts. Lifecraft Awakening is X and 1 green for an instant. Put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on target artifact you control. If it isn't a creature or a vehicle, it becomes a 0 0 construct artifact creature. This card's hilarious! You can turn non creature artifacts into creatures. I love this to death. I love it so much. Think about this in Commander. Staff of Domination can be a creature. Hellval can be a creature. All of these in Experiment Crash and just. It's so awesome, the experiment gets everything! Lifecraft Awakening, your home is in Commander, for sure, easily, no problem, I love this card. Lifecraft Cavalry is 5 mana for a 4-4 Elf Warrior with Trample and Revolt. It enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. In a deck where you can consistently trigger Revolt, this is a powerhouse. Especially because it comes built in with Trample. Paying 5 mana for a 6-6 six, six, and you have Trample, that's amazing. As it stands, even without consistent Revolt triggering, it still isn't half bad. 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four with a combat keyword, there are worse filler cards. I'd say it's a decent creature with huge upside. It'll make a solid number of green limited decks. Lifecrafter's Gift is 4 mana for an instant. Put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature, then put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. This is a strong card. It isn't the best green uncommon in the set, definitely not, but it's better than you might think. At worst, it gives 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters to one creature at instant speed. At best, it does so much more, and there are counter granting creatures in the set. Whether through Revolt or in Kaladesh with Fabricate, counters exist, and obviously this gains a lot more value in a deck full of Thriving Rhino. But even without that, it isn't the worst combat trick you're going to find. This is not a bad card at all. Malfist Revolutionary is one of anything and two green for a 3-3 human warrior with trample. When it enters the battlefield or dies, for each kind of counter on target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another counter of that kind. This is one of the strongest uncommons in green easily. 3 mana for a 3-3 with trample is already quite good, that's already worth paying attention to. But having that enter the battlefield slash die effect, that's hilariously strong. You can target any permanent, and it hits any type of counter. Malthus Revolutionary, crazy powerful, very good card, staple in all green limited decks. I mean, it synergizes with Fabricate, Planeswalkers, Charge Counters, Revolt Triggering, plus one, plus one counters. It's so good, you should prioritize this card. Monstrous Onslaught is three of anything and two green for a sorcery. It deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control as you cast the Onslaught. This is as close to a legitimate board wipe as green's gonna get. Monstrous Onslaught is, hands down, one of the best uncommons in the entire set. If you are playing green, you're gonna have at least some decently sized top end creatures, and this is a targeted demolition. 
absolutely first pickable, even better if you have some bombs to work with. You can never ever underestimate removal of any kind in green, this set's no different. There should be a bounty on the Onslaught's head, this is a card that will never wheel. Narnum Renegade is one mana for a 1-2 Elf Warrior with Death Touch and Revolt. It enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. A 1 mana 1-2 with Death Touch and Revolt? This card does so much for 1 mana, my goodness. I mean, is it weird that I just don't care about the Revolt trigger because it has Death Touch? Death Touch is a broken mechanic, and that alone is going to make this a problem creature to deal with. Revolt isn't even that bad. Fighting a 1-2 with Death Touch and a 2-3 with Death Touch? Gonna be the same for most players. Revolt is great, and it does add some nice value to this card, especially when you draw it late game, but the Renegade has enough built-in power to be impactful all by itself. It's a solid uncommon. Natural Obsolescence is 2 mana for an instant. Put target artifact on the bottom of its owner's library. This might as well be removal in this limited format. With so many artifacts running around, creatures, vehicles, the whole gang is here. Natural Obsolescence is solid, instant speed removal for artifacts. Sure, it tucks it and doesn't actually destroy anything, but it's just as good as destroying or exiling, the card's gone. And at instant speed, again, for 2 mana. This is a good common. I see this in a lot of main decks, and it'll certainly come in off the bench when needed. This is powerful stuff. Pima Aether Seer is 4 mana for a 3-2 elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, you get an amount of energy equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. You can also pay 3 energy and target creature blocks this turn if able. Alright, we need to chat. Not only does this stupid creature enter the battlefield with potentially a buttload of energy, but you can use it to force your opponent into blocking with their best creatures, and it has a 3-2 stat line itself. This is pushed for limited play where it'll clearly see the battlefield a lot. And it's on the short list for potential red-green energy upgrades. Think about it. You put this on the battlefield when your pummeler is already a 10-10 or a 12-12, you get more energy that you can count and just go buck wild. Pima Aether Seer will see standard testing for red-green energy, and at worst, it'll be a powerful limited card. This is an early pick for sure. That first trigger, that's the easiest energy production I've seen in a while. Just wow. Ridge Scale Tusker is 3 of anything and 2 green for a 5-5 beast. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature you control. Are you serious, wizards? What are you doing? How is green the strong at the uncommon slot? 5 mana for a 5-5 five five and you buff your entire team. How in the world is this fair? This is first pickable. It could be the most first pickable card in the entire color, minus rares and mythics. Easily one of the best uncommons in the entire set. There's no downside. There's no reason not to play this card. There's just, there's no downside, none at all. Rich Skill Tusker is absurdly powerful, out of control, hilariously strong. If you see this card, you will be hard pressed to find something better to take over it. Holy crap. Scrounging Bandar is 2 mana for a 0-0 zero, zero cat monkey, <laughs> awesome, that enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may move any number of plus 1 plus 1 counters from the Bandar onto another target creature. Definitely better than Wily Bandar, Scrounging Bandar is a counter machine, allowing you to move power to your more impactful creatures. Get a deck with multiple ways to create and distribute plus 1 plus 1 counters and the Bandar gets even better. At worst, this is a 2-2 two, two for 2, so you'll easily play this in limited, for sure. And it comes with that great flexible upside. Solid common, obviously crazy strong in Atroxa, any commander deck with a doubling season, basically. You get the point, Cat Monkey's good. Unbridled Growth is 1 mana for an Enchant Aura, Enchant Land. Enchanted Land has the ability to tap and add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. You can also sacrifice the growth to draw a card. I see this as a worse Abundant Growth, but that's fine because I loved Abundant Growth. Unbridled Growth is going to help you a lot with fixing, and while it isn't great that you have to sacrifice it to get the card, it is there in case you need it. At worst, it's one green mana to draw a card, so that's not really so bad, right? It's decent, won't be a high priority pick unless you're in green and you're running three colors or something crazy like that. And that's going to do it for the rest of the green cards. You all know that I don't usually play green, so you know this isn't coming from a place of bias. Green is looking outrageous in this upcoming limited format. You gotta see this too, right? The color is chock full of powerful commons and uncommons with awesome design and depth. Now that we've seen all five colors, I need to know what you're thinking. Which color do you think has the best shot out of the gate? 
Personally, I think Green has put on one heck of a performance here. It's really showing up strong. Be sure to leave your comments down below and we'll talk about it. It's going to be interesting to see where you all land. Also, be sure to keep tuning in for the secret part 6 of Best of the Rest talking about artifacts and then our pre-release guide coming to you real soon. Exciting stuff. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. I'm not sure how many times I have to remind you about Ether Revolt release, but you know what? Until every single one of you who wants to get boxes has, I will never stop. On TCG Player right now, you can get boxes of Ether Revolt pre-ordered for $91 each. 91 You know, that's a fair price. That's better than most stores can do, and it's certainly better than, you know, not having a store at all. Just sad face. Anyways, great prices, totally fair. If you need to pre-order the set, make sure to click the link. It helps the channel. The channel gets to stay alive. It's all great and wonderful. Enjoy.